In our next lesson, we will be discussing the systems of care for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. The systems of care involves the Rapid Response Team, or RRT, Critical Care Team, and the Code Team, all upholding the unstable patient. In cardiopulmonary resuscitation, utilize every team member and make sure every member is a strong link. EMS crews must stay abreast of updates and innovations in resuscitation and hone the skills required to deliver CPR quickly and efficiently. Hospitals should be ready to receive patients in cardiac arrest and provide excellent care. Critical care and reperfusion centers should be at a constant state of readiness. Early initiation of BLS has been shown to increase the probability of survival for a victim of cardiac arrest. To increase the odds of surviving a cardiac arrest event, the rescuer should follow the steps in the adult chain of survival. The adult chain of survival involves recognizing the symptoms and activating EMS, performing early CPR, proper defibrillation with an AED, advancing life support, and performing proper post-cardiac arrest care. Integrated post-cardiac arrest care is the last link in the chain of survival. Therapeutic hypothermia is recommended for comatose patients with ROSC after a cardiac arrest event and should be cooled to an appropriate temperature. During optimization of hemodynamics and ventilation, 100% oxygen is acceptable for early intervention, but not for an extended period of time. Oxygen should never be titrated so that patient pulse oximetry is less than 94% to avoid oxygen toxicity. Don't overventilate and keep the rates between 10 to 12 breaths per minute. IV fluids and vasoactive medications should be titrated warranted. Percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI, is preferred to thrombolytics. The patient should be taken to EMS directly from the hospital, and if the hospital only offers thrombolytics, the patient should be transferred to a center that offers PCI. Be sure to obtain optimal blood glucose for patients with ROSC, which is higher in post-cardiac arrest care than standard levels. Lastly, be sure to perform an adequate neurology assessment, especially when withdrawing care to decrease false positive rates. That concludes the cardiopulmonary resuscitation in systems of care.